Stanford University. For soldiers on the way to Afghanistan, this is the last stop in battle training. It is as close to real combat as they can get. The National Training Center at Fort Irwin, California, preparing for the latest tactics the enemy will throw at them. My name is Captain Thor. I'm the uh, headquarters commander for Sex Squad. For the first time, a group of academics, experts in national security from Stanford University, are getting a real taste of what combat conditions are like, especially when things go wrong. Outside of combat, it's the most realistic uh, scenario that you will find. Army Colonel Viet Luong is a national security fellow at Stanford. Before coming to the Center for International Security and Cooperation, he was a brigade commander in Afghanistan. Definitely uh, raises uh, survivability on, on a battlefield. Not in that uh, you're able to uh, execute and, and respond to real world uh, scenarios. It also sharpens combat skills and combat life-saving skills. Uh, and the ability to uh, react. Here in the Mojave Desert, the Army has built towns and villages that replicate communities in Afghanistan. And they've created combat scenarios based on actual fighting to test and train troops so they can anticipate what awaits them on the battlefield. For the professors and researchers, visiting the NTC gave a sense of what soldiers face in a war zone. It also taught them how the military responds to ever-changing threats. For an egghead like me to get to Fort Irwin has, is a really great experience because I get to see up close and personal what it means for our national security agencies to adapt to new challenges. That's where it's all happening. It really catalyzed my thinking about resilience as a national security strategy and what the effects are on our troops when they have to plan for what the Pentagon now calls indecisive conflict. The second thing is, more generally, just understanding what training involves and how important training is and thinking about how organizations change. And the Pentagon is in the midst of a very major change as we move past the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. One of the most interesting aspects for the faculty is how commanding officers and enlisted personnel work together to pinpoint mistakes and correct them. After each combat training exercise, the troops run through a debriefing session that doesn't feel much different from a teacher-student exchange in any university classroom. So there's nothing that could compare to actually sitting on the ground and watching these soldiers go through this training and hearing about the debrief and how they're learning and what they're learning and what the plans are to uh, continually change what they're doing on the battlefield. Former ambassador to Afghanistan, Carl Eikenberry, is now a distinguished lecturer at Stanford's Freeman Spogli Institute for International Studies. I did talk to the uh, National Training Center cadre before I left, and uh, they were uh, terribly excited to have uh, a group of very prestigious Stanford professors, including people like a Pulitzer Prize winner in uh, history, to have come down to the Mojave Desert training site and spend a full day with them. Uh, they learn from them, but also it makes them feel good that some of the uh, people here at Stanford that are truly helping to shape thinking about national security issues would care enough about the United States Army and what they're doing to come and spend a Saturday and see firsthand them in action. He spent 37 years in the Army, rising to the rank of Lieutenant General. From 2005 to 2007, he was commanding the American-led coalition forces in Afghanistan. He organized this first-time venture, where academics learned from the Army. I think through some of their questions that they ask to the National Training Center cadre, that there was also some good learning going on. Uh, with the uh, U.S. Army officers that, and sergeants that were uh, listening to these questions. As a teacher, I was really impressed with the way that the training was done. Uh, the facilitator 
didn't stand up in front of the room and talk at the troops that were just engaged in that experience. It was a, it was a Socratic question. You could have seen this at the law school. You could have seen this at the GSB. It's something that we try to do when we teach our international security class uh, to undergraduates, not telling them what they should know, but having them be participants in their own education, which is a much better way to teach. And so I think that the faculty that I was sitting next to and I were, were sort of whispering on the sidelines about how, how pedagogically sophisticated this training debriefing was. Eikenberry sees a higher value to this new association of soldiers and scholars. It's important that our military, our armed forces, our army stay well connected to greater society and a very important plug that I think they should put into greater society is through great institutions of higher learning like Stanford University. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.